Hi, and the winner for the poll to decide today's topic was, um, well, is BFA getting back on track? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to discuss some of the things that were issues with the game before launch and where we're up to now, just to sort of see what we're going to be happy about by the time BFA is finished and what is basically impossible to rescue, I suppose. So the first thing I should say here is I probably didn't think about the title too much because is BFA getting back on track isn't really appropriate because, well, was it ever really on track in the first place? I suspect not. But first of all, uh, the issue that is most important to me, class balance. So on the issue of class redesigns, try and bear in mind where we were when the progress went live in terms of the open alpha. They got off to a bad start in assuming classes didn't need redesigning after losing the artifacts and all the artifact abilities. They then conceded that this was not the case a few weeks later, so they embarked on a significant period of redesign of those classes and specs now, which remember they hadn't originally planned to do. And some of them needed fairly massive redesigns. Um, the, the issue then was you already had class designers who then had a limited amount of time to do these major redesigns, which was not in, initially in the remit. But then senior designers threw a variety of spanners in the works to cause problems for the class designers. Try and imagine you've got this long-term plan and you've got your parameters. They've given you, Your bosses have given you your parameters for the project and you're trying to work your way through it. And then they suddenly start changing those parameters. They start throwing some things in. So we had uptime quotas. Uh, they didn't want people to have very rapid fire classes because in Blizzard's mind, what they, they said was, well, we want people to be able to look around and marvel at the scenery and see the ads coming in and all this business. And if you play a class such as the Rep Pard in the I play, where every second you're not using an ability, you're costing yourself damage, they said, no, we, we need uptime quotas here. We need to have a certain amount of downtime for every spec. But then some class designers sort of stuck that to that more rigidly. They started to relax on that a little bit. So that's a, that's goalposts that changed throughout the process. Um, we had the dumbifications. So what the first time we found out about it is when theory crafters were simming these specs for DPS particularly and finding out, hang on a minute, um, there isn't actually a lot of difference between playing this spec well and just pressing random buttons. What's going on here? So this was a particular, this was a deliberate process, which is going to be reversed for the next expansion, as far as I can tell now. Uh, so that wasted a lot of time as well. Then you had the GCD changes, the thing that was most definitely never asked for, not at all. And not only did was that something else thrown into the mix, but because of the backlash, Blizzard then had to, for, instead of just abandoning it and deciding, well, actually, no one really needs it. Uh, no one's really asking for it. Why don't we just abandon it? No, no. They said, right, we need to now spend two months discussing this in teams and deciding which abilities we're going to allow it back on and which not. And um, so that caused a lot of development time. And it's, again, a situation where class designers don't really know what's going on in terms of what they're going to be told to do next. Um, so, of course, that resulted in maybe a lot of specs not really feeling properly finished, but several specs most definitely in need of major work still. So Blizzard said that that would be addressed in patch 8.1. Now, that's annoying enough being told there's a whole patch going to be out, including a whole raid, and your spec isn't going to be really up to scratch. But now they've said that redesigns are not coming out during patches. <laughs> what do you mean you want to redesign for patch 8.1? Where on earth did you get an idea like that? Uh, so that's despite what they said before launch. And, and the issue here is it's because what they're now saying is in contrast to what they said before. Um, that obviously, not only is that, of course, to concern to some of those players of those classes uh, or those specs at any rate. It just makes you worry that when Blizzard say they're going to address an issue, because sometimes that's what can keep a player hanging on. I'm not happy with the thing at the moment, but actually they say they're going to fix it. I'll just hang about a few months. If you can't even trust them when they say that, that's, that is a worry. 
Um, if you're going to promise something, you really need to either deliver or at the very least make it clear that you wanted to deliver on it and there's a few troubles and it's going to have to be a bit longer. At the very least that. To actually just turn around and go, no, of course we're not going to do it. Um, mm. So not off to a great start there. Then there's the artifact system. So many people complained about boring traits, but with the sheer number of them, many of them were always going to be passive. And that was no different to the artifact traits that we had in Legion. You know, most of those were passive. We had a few that were interesting. And, and it's the same with the Azerite. I think the difference was that in Legion, we got all of them. So having some passive ones was okay because you got all of them. Now you don't. So, and it's dependent on what gear you get because obviously it's not random random. You know, you can target certain bosses as they say, but if you think about the content you get it in, realistically it is random unless you're raiding. You know, if you're doing Mythic Plus dungeons, the way it was at the time at any rate, it was very random. It was random if you even got any. Um, so yeah, but so some of them were also gonna be passive. They also completely abandoned the idea of trying to put any sort of balance into them. That was not feasible, really. Uh, so the key was to make sure that the more interesting ones ended up as the most powerful. But there were two major problems at launch. One was that Mythic Plus Dungeoneers, which is, is billed now as being a very serious form of endgame, and indeed is, had no way of obtaining Azerite armor without just being lucky. And I don't mean obtaining the bits they wanted, obtaining any at all required luck. There were people who ran these things every week uh, at high level and never got any. So, you know, yeah, to not to not get any at all, much less any decent pieces, but none at all, that wasn't really on. Um, and the second thing is that you could get a higher item level or better set of traits and not be able to equip it because your neck was a limiting factor. Now, we've had for a few years a situation where sometimes you have a piece of gear that's higher item level, but the stats aren't, it, aren't as good and therefore you can't equip it. And Blizzard have worked quite hard to try and avoid that situation where possible and have made progress. To be fair, credit where it's due, the item level issues in BFA are much better, much more advanced than in Legion. Uh, they've actually done a decent job on that. It's still not always going to be the case that higher item level wins. But, mm. but in the case of Azerite traits, this was a big issue. You know, you have a piece of, of armor. Let's say it's got a particular set of traits on it and you've unlocked them all. Then you get it at higher item level, you know, from a higher version of, of let's say, the Raid or Mythic Plus Dungeons. And your, your neck isn't high enough to unlock all of them. Then you've got to try and work out with the ones I can unlock, is that still going to be an upgrade or is it not? And a lot of times it wasn't. Sometimes it was just because of the traits. Sometimes you had a normal piece of Azerite gear and you couldn't replace it with the mythic piece of Azerite gear, even if you could unlock the traits, because there was that disparity in the traits as well. So there were all sorts of issues around, you know, although they've done some great work in general on being able to have item level generally be, be the thing to determine whether it's good or not. Now with Azerite armor, all bets off again. You're having to sim it. So there have been some changes that sort of improved some things. Mythic Plus Dungeoneers now have a reliable way to obtain those pieces. Before they came up with their ideas, I came up with the three things they could potentially do and they picked the one that I said out of the three was preferable. Wasn't a, the most elegant solution, but it sort of worked. The thing is though, they went a little bit further than I would have done with it. Having uh, your Azerite gear break down into a form of dust that you then sort of, or a currency that you use to obtain it, has caused a knock-on effect on raid guilds because they're now giving, whereas in the past, with raid gear, and you'd still do this with non-Azerite gear now, unwanted gear, if no one wants it at all for, for a gear upgrade, then it's available for people for transmog. Well, now what's happening with a lot of guilds is they're giving it to people to disintegrate. If, if people need a particular piece of Azerite gear and it's got really good traits on it and they can't get it from the raid or it's just not dropping, give them the unwanted Azerite pieces to, to dust and turn into the vendor for the one with the traits that they ideally want. Um, that's upset some raiders. Now, Blizzard have recently said, well, it's only really the hardcore guilds doing this. But it isn't. I'm not saying that all Mythic guilds are doing this. I'm not even saying a majority are doing this. But what I do know is that there are guilds from the top end all the way down to even non-cutting edge guilds that are doing this. Because I've known that people tell me that in their guilds this is done and they're, they're not even cutting edge guilds. So although I'm not saying it's been done um, in lots and lots of guilds, I don't know. 
it is de being done along the full range of mythic raiding guilds. So they can't easily dismiss it as that. Uh, and although the idea of having a vendor involved so you can just basically pick it after a certain discrete period of time, I'd have still had the currency come from doing Mythic Plus Dungeons with a weekly cap or something like that. I wouldn't... The problem was with Mythic Plus Dungeons. The problem was nothing to do with raiding. So why affect raiding and loot's behaviour in raiding? Bear in mind, they've already pissed off raiders with the forced personal loot. Now, you know, you're doing this as well. I mean, really. Um, but anyway, at least for Mythic Plus Dungeoneers, it did solve a problem. As to the improvements in the traits themselves, so they've added a new ring for armor from, you know, from certain sources. Now, apparently, when it first went out, this, this wasn't appearing on the World Quest armor. I couldn't attest to that myself. But when I obtained a piece at the weekend, it was fine. So I'm guessing if there was an issue that that's been fixed. Um, the Azerite armor is not generally considered as interesting as the artifact weapons is legions. So I don't know whether Blizzard thought the change was a good progression from the original idea or, which I actually think is most likely, they just want to keep shaking up the systems. So it was like, okay, Legion, we did it with weapons. We're going to do it now with armor. Revenge of the Potato People, the next expansion, we're going to do it with something else. Um, there is certainly a strong l suggestion that they're not going to have Azerite armor in the next one because they were talking recently about the fact that tier gear may be coming back. Obviously, you can't have the old tier set system alongside Azerite armor systems. So that would suggest Azerite armor systems not here next expansion. But at the moment, because of the criticism of it, it's very difficult to tell whether it was always the plan to just have Azerite's armor for this expansion, just as artifact weapons for the last expansion, or whether it has come as a result of the fact that they, they're not really happy with it at all. Now, I would say that they do seem to be improving the way the armor works, but it also seems very reactive to me as opposed to plan changes. So I don't think, and even though there are more changes planned, I don't think they're ever going to get it to a point where people feel that the system worked, but I do think they're making it better. So I'll give them a partial win on this one. They are improving it. I think at the moment with where it is, I don't think Azerite armor, if, you, if they'd really thought it all the way through from the start, would have ended up being put into the game, if I'm honest. Um, but they are making consistent improvements and, and I think they're doing their best to pick this turd up by the clean end, if I'm going to be honest. Uh, now, just before moving on, I would say that the artifact system does highlight what I think is a problem with Blizzard's approach. By only using a system for one expansion, you end up, obviously at the start of it, it's going to have teething problems. It's not going to be in its finished state. So you end up improving it, as they've been doing with Azerite gear, uh, only to abandon it. At the end of the expansion, they might, I don't think they are going to get this into a state where people are going, oh yeah, I'm really happy with this. But you never know, they may be, they maybe will. But then they're going to abandon it and go to another system uh, that will also be poor when first introduced. Now, if a system is good enough to be in the game at all, then I would say it's good enough to be in for the foreseeable future. You know, put it in, make it better, get it to a place where the players approve of it, and then just keep it in until all of a sudden it seems out of place with the changes that the guild has made by them. The guild, behave yourself, the game has made by them. And then you start to think of, can you amend it or do you just get rid of it and replace it with something else? Don't get rid of a system just because, well, this system was only for this expansion. That's just daft. Uh, but anyway, I've used the same arguments about class design. Just make the classes work. Tweak as necessary. And if the game changes, then maybe that means you then have to relook at those classes. But generally speaking, the game, the game changes at a glacier pace. Um, if you just got classes to work, it would work for years. Now, next one, the war campaign. This is a big aspect of the game that actually did seem to work well from the start. So um, you have an interesting series of storylines with the usual fascinating cinematics in there as well, which are always hotly anticipated. Uh, the BFA storyline has, and I said this uh, before BFA launched, it has generated more speculation than I can remember for any previous expansion storyline. Plot holes and other irregularities aside, that's got to be a good thing. I'll give them kudos on that one. But as good as I thought the war campaign was, I'd still like to say that the story is definitely going to be getting better as we move away from 
you know, the faction stuff and more towards the old god stuff. Um, but one thing I will also give them credit for on the war campaign is very early on, uh, they made sure that if you were, if you were leveling multiple characters, you wouldn't have to go through the endless slog and all your outs with regards to the war campaign. Um, that was really good as well, as well. And they did that, you know, the out friendly aspect of that a lot more quickly than the equivalent in Legion 2. So that was good. Um, and hopefully they'll keep that up. So finally, you've got Islands and Warfronts, which in terms of the usual thing, when they first advertise an expansion, they advertise a few features. The Island Expeditions and the Warfronts were two of those features. Both have come into criticism for various reasons. The main issue with Warfronts is that they are just boring and they're simply necessary loot pinatas. But that's not really implementation so much as what it inevitably was always going to be. If they made a PvP Battle Royale version, then that could gain some fans. Uh, but I don't think there's anything else you can do to polish this turd. Um, Islands, on the other hand, have received a number of updates. The big problems with Islands is that Blizzard never really knew what they wanted to do with them. I always felt that this was something driven by the technology rather than a creative idea. Some people said, oh, we've got the technology, we could do this thing. Procedurally generated content, wouldn't that be great? Like your riffs. And, and, and they went, yeah, yeah, we should do some of that. And, and the creative process never really caught up, as far as I can tell. That's, that's my reading of it. Even in the alpha, they basically said they don't even know if it's going to last all expansion. They didn't know what to do with them. Now, in the way, initially, the way to incentivize it was they're going to say, well, we're going to have, you know, our, your artifact power. If you want to farm that efficiently, you're going to be doing your islands at first anyway. Um, so that was the way they tried to incentivize it. They have put, oh, there were other things in as well, but and they've doubled down on those other things. The cosmetic rewards, which is also going to be some really good. I mean, obviously, Blizzard, of course, are going to want procedurally generated content. But it's just not as engaging to do much of. It never really seems to stay as interested as, say, Mythic Plus dungeons, which seem to stay fresher. Um, you know, maybe that's the affixes each week. Maybe if the if the islands had something like that. But I'm not sure that would necessarily improve it in that particular case. But yeah, in terms of incentivizing people, uh, they haven't just relied on making it the most efficient way to get AP, which is good. So the fact that they are... I still don't think they really know how to make it work. But what I would say is, you know, they've dangled the carrot of cosmetic rewards. That's that's working with some people. Um, and also, again, because it's technology driven, the, the use of that technology for the Arathi Basin, where instead of being up against enemy players, you're, you're up against enemy NPCs. Um, that's a good that's a good idea. And that's a good use of that technology as well. But. The big thing, I would say the big feature with Battle for Azeroth was, now, nah, I'm not a fan of PvP in World of Warcraft. I enjoy it in other MMOs, not so much in WoW, but you can't ignore War Mode. This was a huge feature of BFA. Uh, it was one I very much approved of uh, because it meant I could opt out. Um, however, due to the massive imbalance of factions, War Mode, not as successful as it would have been had the populations been more equal. Blizzard recently talked about it being a big issue. Uh, they've accepted the fact that you just have this huge imbalance and it is a major issue and they're not quite sure what to do about it. Um, so they noted that don't, not only do you have this huge imbalance which causes a problem in itself, because of it, there were a lot of Alliance players who would ordinarily have put war mode on, they'd be perfectly happy to have war mode on, were turning it off because they were finding it impossible to do what they wanted to do. So not only do you have far fewer Alliance players in the first place even wanting to do war mode, but many of those are disengaging because it's too frustrating. Now, there aren't too many things you could do to truly fix this, but one thing Blizzard tried was a big gear inducement to persuade Alliance players to turn that war mode on. It has seemed to incentivize some, I don't know numbers, um, but it doesn't, I mean, it hasn't solved the problem. It's never going to solve the problem because you just do not have enough Alliance players. In addition, there are now Horde players complaining on the forums about, you know, those Alliance players getting those high item level rewards when they're excluded from it. So I don't really know how to assess this one, especially as it's not a form of the game that I've ever really engaged in. 
uh, apart from trying it out in the alpha and the beta. Uh, it's more the beta, I suppose, really. Um, I think Blizzard have a good system. Um, you know, War mode itself is a good system, but it just, do, like a lot, of, like any form of world PvP at the end of the day, it doesn't work with faction disparity. I also can't think of anything they could do to fix it, to be fair, other than possibly allowing the option of a mercenary mode, you know, where horde players could defect to the other faction purely for PvP purposes, not for quests or anything like that. But that's not an elegant solution, and it may not even be a suitable solution. It's just the only thing I can think of. Um, so if I have to conclude here, I would say they're trying, and I would say it's not a problem with the system as such, but f they do face a genuinely difficult problem to solve, which is a legacy from, you know, that this faction imbalance has been going on for years and has never really been addressed. And, and to be honest, it's probably now at a point where, what can you do? Um, I'm not saying there is no solution just because I can't think of one. I've not heard anyone describe one that would actually work either. So in terms of BFA getting on track or back on track, however you want to look at it, I would say there are some improvements slowly coming out. I still see plenty of signs that they're in denial about some aspects of the game, which is not encouraging. And because that means those improvements will always be limited. I don't think they can really rescue the expansion at this point. I think the best thing that they can do is hope that the wheels stay on and that they've got enough of a player base still left at the end of it, which is definitely doable to get a fresh start next expansion. If the story is at least as rewarding by the end, and that is a huge plus, as I say, irregularities and plot holes aside, the fact that a lot of people are excited about the story of this expansion is really good. And I hope, and I have expectations, not just hopes, that it will deliver on that. I've, I've really got serious expectations that at the end of it, we're going to think, yeah, that was a really good storyline. Um, then people may at least not place the expansion below the notorious Warlords of Draenor in the pecking order. OK, so those are my views on where I think BFA is at the moment and what's realistic to expect in the coming patches as well. Uh, let me know what you think, of course, in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to give it a like, subscribe for further content. Click the bell notification as well so you're notified of further content. And also when I put a poll up, which there will be another one up for a few days time for the next video, you can vote to see what topic that should be as well. And if you've got any suggestions for topics, you can put them in the comments too. Well, you could put them in the comments to this video or on the poll as well. And I may add it to the list for future videos. So until next time, I'll see you later.